Hello, this is the Trade Site Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, July 31st, 2016 and ending Friday, August 5th. That's right, we are into August, the 8th month of 2016 already. Here's the dollar index daily chart. You can see the uh, dollar came in on Friday. Other than that, it was a pretty narrow week. Not much going on. We'll look at the uh, intraday ranges in a few minutes. Here's a look at the euro dollar chart. Just the inverse obviously popped up on Friday after uh, not much going on most of the week. Pound dollar didn't do anything even on Friday. Remember we had a Fed meeting this last week and that didn't uh, do anything because nothing changed. Aussie dollar uh, also up on Friday, uh, coming towards a 13 seeker sell signal. The last one that the Aussie dollar got was back in April and that was the top, so just be aware of that. Here's a look at the pound uh, again, also hanging near lows. All right, let's look at the 30 minute charts of these and just take a look at what the action was uh, during the week. And again, like I said, most of these are pretty narrow. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, let me convert this over to uh, the proper time template. So there you go. So now you can see all the way through the week uh, on the Forex week. Uh, it's Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. We'll add in a couple more clicks here to get us all the way back to the prior week. So this is the Euro dollar. You know, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday until the Fed announcement were very flat. You can see the pop on the Fed announcement. Uh, that was after basically two and a half days of 60 pips of total range. Horrible. Uh, pop on the Fed announcement. Another pop Thursday morning. Thursday going into Friday for 24 hours was dead flat. And then after everybody was pretty much done and gone for the week, we got a late move. So if it wasn't for that, the whole week was basically 150 pip range, 60 of it for the first half of the week. Just really, really, really horrible. Here's a look at the uh, pound dollar and 30 minute uh, candles. 200 pips or so for the whole week. Uh, again, Friday late, the move there. Without that, it's only about 150. That's average daily range on the pound. It did that for the whole week. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday were very choppy. You can see the pop on the uh, Fed announcement. And then, again, late Friday, uh, we made the move. All right, so let's take a look at the economic data that's coming out this week globally and uh, see what we've got. So on Sunday, to start it off, we've got Australia on bank holiday still releasing their AIG manufacturing index and their HIA new home sales and their MI inflation gauge. China's got manufacturing and non-manufacturing PMI uh, and then the uh, Kaxin manufacturing PMI. Japan's got their manufacturing PMI. Switzerland's on bank holiday on Monday. Spain, Germany, Italy, France and the broad European sector and the UK all releasing their manufacturing PMI data. Uh, then we've got a bank holiday in Canada Monday also. So Switzerland and Canada on bank holiday. Interesting. Uh, U.S. has got their final manufacturing PMI as ISM services, construction spending, uh, loan officer survey at some point on Monday here in the U.S. Japan's got their monetary base. Australia's got building approvals, trade balance. New Zealand's got inflation expectations, 10-year bond auction. Going into Tuesday, rate announcement out of Australia, consumer confidence out of Japan at 1 a.m. Eastern time. Australia, really busy this week. Commodity prices, Spain's unemployment change, Switzerland's retail sales and manufacturing PMI, UK construction PMI, Europe's broad PPI number, and back here in the US, core PCE price index, personal income and spending. Uh, Canada's got their RBC manufacturing PMI, total vehicle sales here in the US, GDT price index in New Zealand and their labor cost number, um, a bunch of non events monetary policy meeting from the last minutes or minutes from the last fed uh sorry bank of japan meeting uh the cax and services pmi spanish italy france germany and the broad european sector and then uk all releasing their services pmi within an hour of each other early in the wee hours wednesday here in the u.s retail sales out of europe adp non-farm employment change here in the u.s final services pmi this is all wednesday morning ism non-manufacturing pmi Crude oil inventories, that's the weekly number. We've got retail sales out of Australia. Uh, we've got the SECO Consumer Climate out of Switzerland. We've got the ECB Economic Bulletin out of Europe. Retail PMI out of Europe. 10-year bond auction out of France. We've got uh, a Bank of England rate announcement in their speech or their uh, summary there. Um, then Thursday morning here in the U.S., Challenger Job Cuts, the weekly unemployment claims number, factory orders, Natty Gas, that's a weekly number, AIG Construction Index, average cash earnings out of Japan, rate announcement out of the Bank of Australia, or their statement from the rate announcement, I should say. Going into Friday, leading indicators out of Japan, German factory orders, French trade balance, Switzerland's foreign currency reserves, Halifax Housing Price Index in the U.K. at 3.30 a.m. Eastern Time. 
Europe, Italian industrial production, then Canada, their trade balance and unemployment number. And here in the U.S., same thing, trade balance and unemployment. Now keep in mind, each one of those, trade balance, unemployment with the ADP, uh, those are the, um, each one of those is one of the three big numbers every month we would go half size ahead of. We are half size currently anyways every day in Forex because this is summer doldrums time. Uh, you can see it's really boring. A lot of very narrow range nights, difficult to make money. Uh, so we're just playing half size here, but we usually we would be half size ahead of Friday because of the trade balance and we would be half size because of the unemployment. And since we're half size anyway, so really going into Friday with those two big numbers in the middle of summer doldrums, you're going to want to play some really small size. There's no point getting caught up in any sort of spike. Uh, that you're going to see on that. So uh, two of our big numbers on Friday, everything else just spread out throughout the week. There's a lot of data, but none of it seems to be the key data. No more Fed meeting. Uh, so we'll see. We'll just call it as we go. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple of weeks. We'll even extend that for 4X to 3 weeks during the summer here because things are slow. Have a great trading week.